Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. So as you know, I usually make tutorial videos on crypto related things, how to do smart contracts and so on, and it's very fun. But for the most part, I spend my time now working and not getting around so much time to make these tutorial videos. And on the other hand, on weekends, I like to have fun and build some cool stuff. So now, I decided I'm going to make this video series about me doing something that I like and uh, showing the progress of what I'm busy with. So what I'm busy doing is building an RPG kind of story based game, uh, which I'll show you. And this is one of the characters. We'll get to that as well. And instead of this being a full on tutorial, I'm going to show you the progress I make, how the game looks, uh, what's happening in the game and all the extra features I'll be adding. Of course, I'll make tutorial videos, but I also want to have some fun. So the game is going to take place in this world called Sketchy Corp. And um, we're going to design the storyline as we go. It's going to be very fun. I do not have an absolute a set plan for the game. So it's going to be cool to see how it unfolds, but it's going to be based um, of some of these NFT based characters from Sketchy Ape Book Club. Now, the game engine I'll be using is known as Construct 3. Now, Construct 3, let me just pull this in there, is um, a game engine that is built to, you know, facilitate uh, HTML5 games and you can also export them to desktop and mobile uh, but this will be uh, a web based game a browser based game so eventually you'll be able to play this as well and who knows maybe I'll release um, little uh, increments and versions of the game so that after a video you can actually go and play it for a little bit. Now like I said it's not a full-on tutorial video however I am going to show how I achieve certain results uh, in the game engine. Here it is, Construct 3. I used to use Construct 2 back in the day. This is totally not a sponsored video at all. I really like the engine. So I just thought I'd show you this as well. And then let's take a look at what I've done already because last weekend I started with the game and building some game assets. So the first thing I wanted to do is get a character and I thought let me make a sprite sheet uh, of a sketchy ape character. So I took the design and I make, made a pixelated sprite sheet of this character. A sprite sheet essentially allows us to uh, animate the character walking uh, downwards, upwards, left and right. And it's in this kind of 2.5D, I don't know how to explain the perspective, but you know, it is uh, not 3D <laughs> and also not full on 2D. It's kind of top down RPG vibes. Uh, anyway, I also designed uh, assets such as this ink dam, which I have a really good idea for in the game uh, and also things like these info boards, which I'll show you now uh, in Construct 3. The layout of the engine is pretty simple. You get your properties of selected items. Uh, we get our sheets or the world or the sheet that we are busy with up here. Uh, our project files, all the files that I've imported so far and then very important, the layers. Now, I'm just going to show you the, the world size. So um, what I'm busy with now is the actual world uh, that Sketchy Corp plays in. So you can see how big the world's going to be. Uh, this is our character right over there. So it's quite big. And then also I'm going to make it so that you can go into the houses um, and explore uh, some of the buildings as well and maybe do interesting things like drive around. Who knows? We're going to have some fun with this. So uh, I just wanted to show you the, the magnitude of the space that you'll be able to walk around in uh, when you are not inside buildings. If we look at the gameplay so far, what I've added is the sprite sheet of a character. And this really gives the illusion that the character is walking. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I also have a building, the art studio. You can't enter it. Uh, but I do have this info system. So if you walk close to one of these info boards, you see this dialogue pop up and you get the smooth animation as it goes away. I think that's pretty nice. And then if you hold down space bar, you can see you can run and your stamina starts to decrease there at the top right uh, corner. And if you just walk normally, then the stamina increases again. So 
stamina would play a, a, a pivotal part in, in our game as well. And then here's another info board. So I don't want to give away too much of the mystery of the game, uh, but I just want to show the dynamic uh, and also the inner workings of it. So you also get these black kind of ink puddles. And I was thinking because this is the sketchy universe, the sketchy corp, right? It's all based on drawings. And so the idea is that the ancient ones, which we'll get to later in the game, uh, maybe we get to see them as well. Um, they, they use this ink to create the world, right? So there's these uh, relics of these puddles left. Uh, but what's nice is a little detail that I've added is the, the footsteps that you get if you walk uh, across these puddles, you know, because you, you're technically now uh, full of ink. And then it also goes away after, I think, 10 seconds. So this is pretty cool. And this is what I have so far. So, um, yeah, like I said, as I make these videos, I'm going to add uh, some of the features that's added and not reveal too much of the game itself for when you play it, uh, that you get to enjoy it. Uh, but to show you how I progress and, and how I build out this game and how I think about certain things as well. And now to show you a little bit on how some of the elements are constructed. Uh, like I said, here's our character and I set up these four animations, which each one uh, for the up direction. These are the animation frames. You can see the character animating. Uh, we have got left as well, uh, right and down. And then I've just added this box, this collision box, so that it can collide with certain things. So for example, this info board, uh, it actually collides with a trigger that I've set up instead of directly with the board. And I think uh, that helps because, uh, for example, if I need the message to change, it's a variable that I can set here instead of, you know, um, in the in the event sheet specify a unique one because I want to use quite a lot of these boards. As for the character and how it moves, um, what it does have on it is a behavior uh, of eight direction and this is just then set to four directional and then also I have a scroll behavior which I've uh, enabled. This makes the camera follow the player around and you can always switch it on and off based off uh, or based on if a character is maybe in a room or if, if the character is now in a vehicle, you know, what should the focus be on? So that's what this is. And then also it's solid so it can interact. So on the event sheet of this, if we go to the player part and I just group these in these little group segments, uh, but essentially we stop all animation and this might look weird. This is not code. We will code a, a little bit later on, but for the most part, how you make games in Construct 3, is with these event sheets. You get conditions and then you get actions. So if something is a certain way, what should we do? Okay, and this is the left and the right side. So here I'm simply saying uh, that on every tick, set the shadow uh, to the player because you can see that the player has a tiny little shadow there at the bottom. So I wanted to stick to it. There's various ways you can do it. You can either do a hierarchy uh, or whatever you want to do. However, I'm doing it like this for now. I might change it later on. Uh, but then we get into some simple uh, basic things. So I've added a keyboard as a global element. Um, I've then just made sure that if I press down, uh, the direction moves down, it simulates that. Uh, and the reason why it's simulating is because later on I can add other keys such as W, S, A, and D. Um, as well. So then we just play that animation, right? That corresponding animation. And that's how simple it is to move uh, the actual character. So uh, that is basically how that works. And then I have a few player stats, uh, particularly here, I'm just focused on the stamina. Um, how does that system work? So it's fairly straightforward. I have a variable on the character itself, which is the stamina. I also have this is dirty, that's all the little footsteps that you've seen, but there's also a max stamina. So there's just some simple uh, things happening here, saying that if we are moving, if it's at the running speed and the stamina is greater or equal to two, every two seconds or every 0.2 seconds, then start reducing the sta stamina. Here, we just normally increase the stamina by one, just to make sure that you do pick up that energy again. 
And of course, how do we start running? Well, we press spacebar and we do some checks to make sure we set to the running speed and we also reduce the speed back to normal when these things are not being pressed, okay? So uh, that's as simple as it is and as simple as it works. Now, for the footsteps, also very straightforward. We have a character and we check if it's not dirty, this um, variable over there. And if we overlap the dam, then we trigger once, we set it to true. What happens if we are dirty? Well, if we are dirty, we're going to wait 10 seconds before we set it to false. Uh, this we can then decrease or increase depending on how long we want the character to have footsteps. And then here's the logic for creating those footsteps at the character's location. And the footsteps doesn't need to rotate because they're just these two dots and they work kind of in any direction. So that was a little um, smart move uh, so that I didn't have to angle them as well. Uh, but yeah, and then we have just this info section and basically this is the info that pops up uh, whenever we cross an info board. The info section is all the way right here at the top. Here you can see it. And there's this tiny line that is our boundary box or our layout size. And um, that's why the UI is sitting here. The reason why it's sitting all the way at the top is because on my layer, I've switched off parallax. I set it to zero. Um, and the reason is because then the UI can follow the, or can stick to the screen, right? And is not part of this world that is moving with the character. And that is what I have so far in the game. Now, of course you might say, well, how can I do this, right? I wanna participate. Um, my advice is to get Construct and view a few of their tutorials because they, Construct is so simple that when you understand how to use it and you look at these uh, event sheets that I have, you'll be able to immediately know how it was done. However, if you have a special request for me to explain something in the next video, maybe re-implement something, let me know in the comment section, I'll do that. For now, I just want to show you the update and the progress of my game. So this weekend, I'm going to continue building it and then I'll make another video on the new features that I've added. But for now, we know that we have this little uh, dialogue box section and we also can run, we can lose stamina and we can get footsteps that disappears. And I think that's a pretty cool uh, starting point for a adventurous game. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about it, but also let me know your ideas for the game. I'm really excited to see um, your creativity come out and who knows, maybe I implement that and we'll see how we can build this game out this year. I think it's going to be really fun to see where it is at, at the end of 2024. Trusted.